This is Channel 2 News, coverage you can count on. In fires that are in grasslands with winds and, and weather like we've seen recently, it's going to happen. It is going to happen. Embers are an extremely common cause of spot fires, which we saw coming from the Farad Fire west of Reno. How you can protect against them tops Channel 2 News at 530. The Farad Fire grew again today, but containment is also growing, which is some good news. I'm Landon Miller. And I'm Kristen Remington. Thanks for keeping it here tonight. Encouraging, especially considering all that wind we had today. The Farad Fire has burned 670 acres. It's 20% contained. Uh, we have an updated look now on how much area the fire has covered right yeah. there in that, that red zone. Uh, Chief Meteorologist Mike Alders in the Weather Center with a look at the weather conditions firefighters are facing right now. And then we have Elizabeth Olveda live in Northwest Reno with a closer look at how embers can spark fires miles away. Yeah. But we're going to start with Jamie Hayes who is live at Gold Ranch with the latest on the Farad fire. Jamie? Well, you know, I was here for most of yesterday, and I have to say in the past 24 hours, it's looking pretty good out there. You don't see as much smoke in the air as you did yesterday from Gold Ranch, which is where I'm at. And crews have been working so hard that I-80 is actually back open. I-80 was closed in both directions for most of yesterday, but then reopened around 8 o'clock last night. Then early this morning, they closed it again, which caused some truckers to be stuck for hours. I-80 was reopened in both directions just a few hours ago. Eastbound is completely open while westbound has an escort by the highway patrol. Now the reason traffic is moving slowly is to allow the helicopters carrying water to fly over safely. Officials do ask that you pay attention to driving and less on the fire and the crews. Do not stop and, and kind of look at what the activity is going on. We need them to continue on and uh, just be safe out there because we have a lot of firefighters and we want everyone to go home at night. And crews are still out there working hard trying to control the flames and officials do say that there's still a chance that I-80 will be closed again. And officials are asking that if I-80 does close again, do not take Dog Valley Road because it's not a viable detour. Covering Firewatch, Jamie Hayes, Channel 2 News. All right, Jamie, thanks for that update. Large fires like the Farad Fire can send out ash that can start fires far from the original source, which we've seen before. Yeah, that's right. And it makes sense when you think about it, because the ashes carry some very hot embers with them. Elizabeth Olvetta joins us live at Rob Drive with a look at how you can protect your home from these attacks. And Liz, this is actually something that's pretty common, right? Yeah, that's right, Landon. I spoke with one of the Great Basin incident management teams earlier today, and he said that actually every single one of the fires that we've seen in the area the past couple of weeks has had a follow up spot fire because of those embers. Embers that are blown up ahead of the fire, it spots ahead, and with, with conditions like we see on a lot of these red flag days, that can be a mile out ahead of a large fire. Curry said with fi with fires in grasslands like our area, the winds we see on red flag days make spot fires almost inevitable. Luckily, there are a few things you can do to protect your home and your neighborhood from these ember attacks. In addition to defensible space, which is clearing vegetation at least 30 feet out from your house to protect it from active flames, he says it's equally as important to clear out any pine needles or leaves that you may have in your rain gutter. Now, this is because an ash carrying a hot ember could potentially land on top of your roof and if you you have anything flammable up there, even leaves, your house is at risk. Even the type of roof you have can be dangerous. If you've got a wood shake shingle roof and a, an ember gets into one of those cracks and then you have the wind, we, we see those types of, of home ignitions happen all the time. He says if you do happen to have a wooden roof, it's better to just re-roof your entire home and replace it with metal or even asphalt shingles. Covering the story live, Elizabeth Olveda, Channel 2 News. All right, is weather helping or hurting firefighters? The, the gusts were pretty powerful, pretty strong this afternoon. Yeah, let's get a little bit more on these winds with uh, Chief Meteorologist Mike Alger and the Weather Center. Are they, are they blowing pretty hard today, Mike? Well, they are blowing reasonably hard, as you would expect on a very, very hot, clear day like this. The afternoon winds are up. There's also another issue, not here locally, 
but down to the south, and that is some lightning. Now, it appears like, uh, if you look on it, this has the radar and the lightning overlaid here, and it looks like there's just not much precipitation. Well, part of the reason for that in this area is that we're really in an area where the radar coverage is very poor, so there very well could be some, uh, uh, some rainfall. You notice some of these cells are being picked up by radar, but down there, basically from Tonopah, stretching off there to the south of Ely and over there toward uh, the uh, uh, eastern side of Nevada, you do have a lot of lightning activity down there as that low pressure system, or excuse me, the high pressure ridge kind of flattens out. Now up here, it's very, very clear, very dry. This is a uh, look quick look alive from the smoke of that uh, uh, Farad fire, as Liz was talking about. It's actually a lot better. As Jamie was talking about, it's actually a lot better. For us here, eight mile per hour winds now blowing at that fire, 17 up in the northwestern part of town. So we go into the night tonight, they are going to calm down up at the fire location in the middle of town and we will still have a little drainage breeze there uh, up in the northwest. But by tomorrow afternoon, they're going to come back almost as strong. I think they'll be a little less uh, vigorous tomorrow than they were here today. Across the area, it's just a big ridge of high pressure. You can see the precipitation in the southern part of the state around that high. But as we look into the next little bit of time here tonight, 10 o'clock, we'll still be in the low 80s. 60 probably when the sun comes up tomorrow morning. And by 9 o'clock, already well up into the 70s, and we should see upper 90s again by the afternoon. We'll tell you how long that's going to last coming up here in a little bit. All right. Sounds good, Mike. Thank you. We want to let you know now the wall fire burning north of Sacramento in Butte County has destroyed dozens of homes. At least three dozen homes, in fact, are estimated to have been destroyed by the wall fire. Thousands are still under evacuation orders as well. The fire has burned nearly 5,800 acres and is 45% contained. And with the busy fire season likely to continue in the months ahead, please stay with Channel 2 News for Firewatch continuing coverage.